Hi, my name is Katie Vonderleith, and I'm a research program manager at the Specialty Coffee Association and the Coffee Science Foundation. I'm really pleased to be here with all of you today to share five key takeaways from the National Coffee Data Trends Specialty Coffee Breakout Report. I'm really excited to talk about this report because it is such a rich and unique source of high quality data about specialty coffee consumption in the United States. So in my presentation today, I'll share some highlights from this report, but really I'm only scratching the surface on what's available. So if you're at all interested in specialty coffee consumer trends, I would recommend downloading this report available for free on the National Coffee uh, Association's website. I also wanna take a moment to note that this breakout report, as the name implies, is actually a subset of a larger study called the National Coffee Data Trends Report. Uh, this larger report is part of a series of consumer research studies conducted by the National Coffee Association of the United States since 1950. And the full report takes a deep dive into consumer trends in the United States, covering the entire spectrum of coffee from traditional to specialty, everything in between. And it also tracks consumer patterns and attitudes towards coffee since 1950, so for the past 71 years. Uh, this larger report from which the Specialty Coffee Breakout Report stems is available for purchase on the National Coffee Association's website. All right, so I'll take just a moment to talk about the methodology of this report. So 1,528 people were interviewed for this study. Um, the survey participants were randomly selected um, from online panels and the researchers took special care to make sure that the sample of 1,528 people was representative of the ethnic, age, geographic location, and gender dispersion of the United States. And so what that means is that because these researchers took extra care to make sure that the data that was collected in the sample was representative or similar proportionally to um, what is uh, actually the diversity of the United States, is that we can take an extra layer of confidence in these results that um, we can extrapolate from the 1,528 people to the larger United States. All right, so let's get to the data. So the first takeaway for this report is that specialty coffee drinkers miss cafes and coffee shops. This takeaway more so than others is directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, survey takers were provided with a list of statements and then they could say whether they agree or disagree with those statements. And in particular, uh, exclusively specialty coffee drinkers uh, demonstrated that they missed specialty coffee cafes. Um, they miss the social aspect of out-of-home coffee. 53% of folks said that. 52% um, of people, of exclusive specialty coffee drinkers said that they miss going to coffee shops. 51% uh, of coffee drinkers said that they miss specialty coffee out-of-home. And 39% tried to make their usual out-of-home coffee at home, but it's just not the same. And then finally, 28% of specialty coffee drinkers said that they're finding it difficult to get the coffee products that they want in stores. So though we can clearly see that uh, specialty coffee drinkers are missing the in-person experience of drinking coffee, um, from the next slide, we can see that they also don't expect the cafe experience to be exactly the same as it was before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So actually both exclusively traditional coffee drinkers and exclusively specialty coffee drinkers um, are both interested in, um, well, proportions of those folks are interested in seeing um, increased uh, sanitation and uh, care taken towards um, disease prevention and uh, making sure that uh, the cafe owners and, and all of these spaces are, um, making efforts to decrease the incidence of disease. So uh, for example, if workers are handling my food, are wearing gloves and masks, um, that would increase the likelihood of visitation. Um, having customers wear masks, uh, following sanitization protocols. And so 
Again, though we're seeing that specialty coffee consumers want to go back into coffee shops, we're also seeing that there um, are some measures that retailers can take to make it a more comfortable experience for some of these specialty and non-specialty coffee drinkers. The second key takeaway is cold coffee is a key category. So those of you who have been following consumer trends in the United States know that uh, cold coffee has been gaining popularity for the past decade or so. Uh, and what we're finding in this study is that cold coffee is definitely a, a trend that is here to stay. So looking at this chart, you can see that there are three different types of specialty coffee drinkers. Uh, you have all specialty coffee drinkers on the left, on the top, um, exclusive specialty coffee drinkers, so those who only drink specialty coffee and never drink uh, traditional coffee. And then you have the dual users who drink both specialty coffee and traditional coffee. Um, on the left hand side on this uh, column here, you have percent of past day consumption. So this is um, at the time of interview, if uh, folks had drunk this coffee the day before being interviewed, then that's how they fit into this category. So I think that what is really interesting about this chart is that if you look at the dual users and you go down to non-espresso based beverages um, and you see that 46% that is circled, uh, what that means is that 46% of dual users, so those who drink a specialty coffee and traditional coffee, or those who drink specialty coffee and traditional coffee, 46% of those people at the time of being interviewed had drunk a frozen blended coffee, a cold brew coffee, or a nitro coffee. Um, so that's almost 50% of that particular group. Uh, for exclusive specialty drinkers, it was 33%, and for all specialty drinkers, it was 35%. Um, and I think that this, these statistics are uh, super interesting in their own right, but also the fact that uh, this survey data was collected in January of 2021, which in the United States is the dead of winter, so probably some of the coldest months on average for a lot of regions in the United States. And still we're seeing anywhere from a third to almost half of specialty coffee drinkers uh, drinking these cold beverages. So that is quite um, interesting and uh, trend. And this data leads me to believe that uh, cold coffee is definitely here to stay. Now is also a good moment to say that this um, National Coffee Data Trends report that I was talking about earlier, the full report from which this specialty coffee report, uh, breakout report stems, uh, they've been doing it annually for the past 70 years, but starting this year, they're gonna start doing it twice a year. And one of the main reasons for that is to capture this, um, the seasonal trend of coffee consumption. So ha having a hot season, uh, the summer months and then having the winter months and trying to uh, see how coffee temperature consumption might vary across those different um, time periods. Another point of data that um, supports the idea that cold coffee is definitely here to stay is that um, non-espresso based beverages, so these cold beverages, frozen blended coffee, cold brew coffee, and nitro coffee were some of the more resilient sectors in the specialty coffee category. So this um, series of bar charts shows uh, consumption data for various types of drinks um, from 2017 to January 2021. And you can see that uh, specialty coffee beverages have sort of softened a little bit from 41% to 36%. But um, when you look specifically at non-espresso based beverages, which again includes frozen blended coffee, cold brew coffee, and nitro coffee, we're, we're seeing that though they don't make up a huge percentage of um, the uh, specialty coffee consumption, they do, um, they've shown to be more resilient, especially during the pandemic. Um, looking at non-espresso based beverages specifically, you can see that um, there was a little dip in January 2021, but overall, um, as compared to prior years, there's still growth in this category. So another data point that uh, supports the idea that cold coffee is definitely here to stay. So for the third takeaway, I've called it embracing experimentation. So looking at this chart, you can see that 
Um, it's comparing exclusively specialty coffee drinkers in green to exclusively traditional coffee drinkers in the tan color. Um, so in some of the key takeaways, we'll see that specialty coffee consumers and traditional coffee consumers are sort of uh, similar in their consumption patterns and their attitudes and preferences towards coffee. But this is one of the areas where there's actually a pretty big divide between these two groups. Um, so this, is, this question asks about new types of coffee tried since the pandemic began. And um, we can see on the right hand side that 38% uh, of specialty coffee drinkers did not try a new type of coffee, which is to say that 62% of specialty coffee drinkers did try a new type of coffee. Um, and so that's pretty impressive to me. And uh, it's also interesting to note that it wasn't one particular kind of coffee. 12% uh, of specialty coffee drinkers tried ground coffee, some tried single serve, instant coffee, maybe related to the Dalgona trend, um, cold brew coffee, whole bean coffee, espresso capsules. So we see across a variety of different types of coffees. Um, that folks in the specialty coffee community are are interested in experimenting with these um, different kinds of coffees. They're very engaged with their consumption of coffee. On the flip side, we see pretty much the mirror image with traditional coffee drinkers. 67% um, of traditional coffee drinkers did not try a new type of coffee, um, which makes sense. Uh, they might have different drivers for drinking coffee. Um, Though it is interesting to note that still 33% of those um, traditional coffee drinkers tried a new type of coffee during the pandemic. And so what I think this means for retailers, at least in the United States, is that um, it sort of provides some data and some extra confidence for those who would like to try uh, different types of drinks in their cafes. So in addition to having your sort of classic uh, coffees, your lattes, your black coffees. Um, it is clear that specialty coffee consumers are interested in trying new things and so if uh, retailers can tap into that interest and provide new different types of coffees, maybe cold coffees as we've seen that those are uh, interesting and data shows that those are uh, particularly drunk out of the home, uh, that might be an advantage that uh, retailers can, can uh, take advantage of. All right, so I've saved my favorite two takeaways for last. Uh, takeaway four is roast, then sustainability, drive purchase intent. Um, this uh, takeaway was a little bit hard to make concise, but you'll see what I mean in just a second. So this chart um, shows different claims or different pieces of information that could be provided on a hypothetical uh, bag of coffee. And the question to participants was if this claim or if this piece of information was um, added to a hypothetical bag of coffee, if you would be less likely or more likely uh, to buy that coffee. And so what we can see here is that exclusively specialty coffee drinkers, you see all the red, the different letters and the circles. Um, what that means is that for all of these claims, pretty much yeah, 90% of them is that uh, specialty coffee drinkers are really engaged and interested in having more information about their coffee. Um, and actually across the board for exclusive traditional drinkers, exclusively specialty drinkers, and even dual drinkers, the level of roast specified was the number one piece of information that would increase their likelihood to buy the coffee. Um, but then what I found even more interesting is that the next couple of uh, pieces of information were all related to sustainability, in particular economic sustainability, but also some environmental sustainability. So the second most common um, or the second claim that would mo most likely increase uh, consumers' willingness or intent to purchase a coffee was fair price paid to farmer followed by grown on farms that treat workers well, followed by grown in an environmentally sustainable way, and then the company supports the communities in which the coffee is produced, and then we have grind size, uh, the grind is specified. 
So you can see that exclusively specialty coffee drinkers are particularly interested in these um, different pieces of information, but also they're not that far off from either exclusively traditional coffee drinkers or dual coffee users. And so for coffee retailers, I think what this information uh, means is that sometimes uh, in the specialty coffee community, there's a refrain that is uh, said that is, uh, it only matters what's in the cup. It's what's in the cup that matters. And that is true. We're seeing that roast is important to most consumers. We're seeing that grind size is important to most consumers, but we're also seeing that these um, extrinsic factors, these sort of uh, attributes about how the coffee was produced rather than what it tastes like are also super important to consumers, especially uh, exclusively specialty coffee consumers. All right, so the final takeaway, takeaway number five, is called defying the stereotype. So a little bit of background information. Uh, in the United States, there is a stereotype that is held by some but not all people in the specialty coffee community. And of course, I'm making sweeping generalizations, but that's sort of what a stereotype is. So the stereotype is of a specialty coffee consumer. We would tend to assume that they are um, Caucasian or white, that they have a um, higher level of income, and that they drink their coffee black without milk, without half and half, without sugar, and without any added flavor. Um, and they're probably drinking a light roast or a medium roast coffee. So that is sort of the stereotypical um, way that I think many people in the coffee, uh, specialty coffee community in the United States would imagine a coffee drinker. And when we asked consumers in the United States, uh, did you drink a specialty, a coffee beverage um, made from specialty or uh, gourmet coffee beans, we actually find that um, the specialty coffee consumer profiled from this survey is actually very different than uh, the stereotype that I think a lot of folks uh, have in their mind. So first of all, in terms of the actual coffee itself, we see that uh, specialty coffee drinkers are more likely to use dark roasts, they're more likely to flavor their coffees, and they're more likely to sweeten their coffees. So this definitely flies in the face of the um, stereotype that I think most people hold. Uh, additionally, we're seeing that um, Hispanic Americans and Asian Americans are actually some of the uh, most prevalent, the most, um, the strongest drinkers of, of specialty coffee, followed by Caucasians and then by African Americans. And in particular, Hispanic Americans, um, consumption of espresso-based beverages is driving their high rate of uh, specialty coffee consumption. Another uh, important point to take into account is that there's not a clear line between, uh, there's not a clear line necessarily between exclusively specialty coffee drinkers and um, traditional coffee drinkers. There's also this dual coffee drinker. Um, and in fact, those that category of folks who drink both specialty and traditional coffee, they drink a lot of coffee. They drink almost two more cups of coffee than specialty coffee consumers uh, or traditional coffee consumers. So what that indicates is that there's um, not a clear line between these different groups um, that we can think of uh, coffee consumption on a spectrum of specialty to non-specialty. All right, everyone. So just to recap, the five key takeaways from the National Coffee Data Trends Study, the Specialty Coffee Breakout Report, were one, that specialty coffee drinkers miss cafes and they miss coffee shops. Two was that cold coffee is a key category. Three was embracing experimentation. Four was that roast and then sustainability are important drivers of purchase intent and then Takeaway five was that specialty coffee drinkers defy the stereotype. Uh, thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any questions about this presentation or about the report generally or about consumer coffee research generally, um, I would love to hear from you. My email is kdv at sca.coffee. Thank you so much.